Hello, my name is William Villano. I'm one of the archivists here at the Center for Sacramento History. Get the mask off if you want. No, it's okay. okay. <laughs> and I'm here to talk to you today about, uh, about our archival photographs and what we do to preserve them. Now, a lot of people today think of photographs digitally. We take a million pictures every year on our cell phones and they tend to get preserved digitally. Unfortunately, a lot of our history is not as technologically advanced. We have a whole, whole ton of photographs on physical film. If you look down here, you can tell that over time, that physical film tends to deteriorate. Now, we have a lot of big, fancy archival words like autocatalytic base decay, and I can start talking about long chain polymers, but then everyone would go right to sleep. So, in essence, what our photographs actually are, it is cotton, vinegar, and a sprinkling of other chemicals with a little bit of silver on top. Now, those photographs can create incredibly high resolution images, actually even better than our eyes can physically see, for images made back in the 1880s and up to the 1930s and 40s. Today we have a small collection of photographs from uh, World War II and during the uh, Great Depression. Now a lot of the damage, if you can see here, the silver migration of the photographs creates darker and lighter areas, while others, the plastic of the photograph, which is made out of cotton and vinegar, actually buckles and distorts. We have a few other examples up here that you can see a little bit better where we have arcing and warping of the photograph. Now this obviously causes damage to the image and part of our job as archivists is to make sure that we preserve the images and all the information contained in them. So we have to go through a series of processes to make sure not only that these photographs continue to exist in a usable manner, but that the gases released off of these photographs don't damage others. If you take a look right here, you can tell that the damage is actually contagious. As one starts to deteriorate, spreads to others and others and others, but the further you get away, the less damage you have. In some instances, even the containers used to hold the photographs can decay and damage them. Here we have an old photo album. Obviously, if your family history or any important parts of history are stuck in here, they're not going to be very great for a long time. Ooh. Is it the plastic that did that or the photos that did that? Uh, yes. Cool. It was both the photos <laughs> and the plastic. So the plastic used in this example is actually the same type of plastic that makes up the base of many photographs. Again, it's made out of cotton, which is organic matter vinegar, silver, and a couple other chemicals mixed in. So what we have to do is apply a very, very useful technique called coals. So over here, here we have a demonstration of a preservation kit, an acid-free cardboard board, humidity absorbing boards, preservation plastic, and a whole other layer of preservation plastic. So what we can do is take our photograph place them in here. We already have an example that's all set to go. And then we put them into a freezer. If they're kept at zero degrees, we can take photographs and give them a life of over a thousand years. Where right now we're kept in room temperature once the onset of vinegar syndrome or acetate-based decay as we want to get technical about it. You have about four years before damage is evident. If you keep it, the photograph in zero degrees, below with proper humidity control, those photographs can last for up to 3,000 years. Now, one of the great questions that we always get is, why don't you just scan everything? Unfortunately, that takes quite a bit of time, and if we have four years before we lose the information, and we have five million photographs like we do here at the center, we simply don't have the time to get everything scanned before the damage takes place. So what we do is put them all into our plastic sleeves here, and our preservation kit, interleave it with acid-free preservation paper, wrap the whole thing and then we bring it back into our freezer. To the freezer. Now taking these processes, unfortunately, it was not known to the archival profession for most of the life of the negative. It wasn't until 1997 when the Image Permanence Institute at Rochester Institute of Technology hired a whole bunch of scientists and they discovered this. 
so at that point quite a few photographs had been lost to time but now we know better we have the technology we have the kit and thanks history we have a freezer that's currently at negative two degrees fahrenheit so instead of losing the materials of this box in four to five years and not being able to see what we have or having to spend over a hundred dollars per image to scrape off the emulsion layer and have it professionally handled you can put it in here And we just bought ourselves about a thousand years to get that scanned instead of the four to five years that we would otherwise have before the images are lost. So it is a simple and effective way to maintain our cultural heritage, preserve our history, and take the images of things like the Great Depression, World War II, and the various struggles that <coughs> we have overcome over the time, and buy yourself some time to get everything digitized. Now, just like a woolly mammoth that is trapped inside of a glacier, that will be perfectly fine as long as we keep it cold. If we took those photographs out and we put it in Capitol Park during August, they would probably be gone by at the afternoon. So, thank you. Please let me know if you have any questions. You can email me at csh at cityofsacramento.org, and I'd be glad to walk you through some of the more technical aspects of photographic preservation. I'll hand you off to my colleague, Nicholas Piantis. Hi, so my name is Nicholas Piantic. I'm the film archivist here at the Center for Sacramento History. Uh, thankfully, Tim already explained a lot of the technical aspects, but with film, we do have the same issues, uh, especially when you think about film being wound tightly together on a reel. Uh, once you start to have decay, it, it spreads very quickly. Um, similarly to how William showed you the photos that warp and start to uh, bend, with film, when it starts to warp and bend, that makes it really difficult to scan. So I'm gonna walk you back to our film holdings, show you a little bit about how the film came in and then what we're doing to preserve the film once we have it and i'll try not to hit anything on the way back <laughs> okay we're clear so the center's film holdings uh came uh from local kcra and kovr film networks uh, who were not really interested in preservation at the time it was mainly looking at uh, reuse of the film um, locally so they didn't really plan on having to store it for quite as long as we do uh, let's see. Metal. Um, metal, as William was creating, uh, putting the photos in the freezer, uh, you can't, can't, we can't put it in like that. So we have to actually rehouse it. So. This is what a lot of the film would come in, uh, in with. Uh, it's a metal tin. Uh, oh, this one's already been huh. rehoused. That's terrific. So usually it's also on a, a bit uh, like a metal core. It almost looks like a wheel. There'd be spokes. Uh, what we need to do then is take them off the cores and put them on plastic cores. Uh, so this one already did a little bit of work for us, which is great. Behind then you can see, here we go. Thank you, Kim. This is a plastic core. And Kim, can you see the, the warping mm -hmm. on the camera? You can see how it's already buckled. So we may be able to get this through a scanner, uh, but it's gonna be a lot more difficult and the danger of breaks occurs, which slows the whole process down. So as William was talking about how long it would actually take for us to scan photos, if you're trying to scan film and each time it gets around to one of these ridges, it snaps, then we have to stop, rep uh, repair it, put it back on the scanner. So just like William's saying, it takes a long time to actually digitize film if it's not in good condition. So, one of our things already is we've switched them over to a plastic can. Uh, now the plastic can can go in the cooler. You can see there's a different core. Also, let's see, the can doesn't form a perfect seal. I'm trying to figure out a better way to show you that here yeah if you can kind of look at that so the metal cans were actually made to kind of seal up really well and it keeps the air in so as William was describing with uh, the dangers of once you start to have decay and it catches on that's what ends up happening too with the metal tins so this tin plastic allows it to breathe 
so what we're up against is having to find all these boxes that are full of metal tins and swapping them out before we can even start to preserve them. So as William was alluding to, we have the uh, freezer over uh, for the photographs, which is pretty small. Um, it's purpose built for a freezer or for, um, I'm not even sure if it might even be uh, food, but this space has been cleared out and we're going to actually build a cold freezers get just like the aisles that uh, you saw me walk into uh, these will compress uh, they're a little bit different they allow more airflow uh, and we're going to cool so we can store more film um, both photographic and moving here like I've got uh, in, which will start preserving uh, the film and stopping it uh, from decaying now I can take you over to the back where um, we've got the film lab now with photography, we have a lot of Epson scanners. Um, they do a terrific job with doing a TIFF scan in about eh, 30 seconds or so. So it's a bit of a slow work. Um, but for film, we need to have specialized equipment. So the scan I've been working with before is this one. It's originally started its life as a projector you can see where the projector and the light would go. Instead, it just projects it here and it scans it. Um, this is a really sturdy, uh, easy projector when you can thread some film through it. Uh, the issue though is it doesn't scan high definition. So although you can see it long term when you've scanned it, that file, um, it's possible that it can degrade and it also makes it difficult to view on, on more modern browsers. So to that end, we've acquired of uh, film footage, uh, this film Fabrique scanner, uh, which can scan at high definition. Um, the nifty difference here is that when the film goes on, you notice it doesn't actually use sprockets. This is all tension as you thread the film. So it puts much less stress on the film. Um, also, unlike the other scanner, the film's out. So it's, um, if there is a, a break, it's much easier to fix. We don't have to take it off. And then the actual scanning camera can be swapped out. Uh, so possibly in the future, if we ever uh, need to upgrade, we're able to do that. So the different um, parts here make this scanner so much better uh, than the one we had before. So we're very fortunate to have that. We have a question. Yeah. Someone has some 60-year-old film, 16 millimeter, 60-year-old mm -hmm. film. <clears throat> Should they open the metal cans for storage? That'd be ideal. You know, um, ideally you would have, excuse me, William. Ideally, you'd want it to breathe a little bit in a cool climate. Um, one thing also that the new uh, storage will have, you wouldn't want to put it just in your own freezer. Uh, the idea is that it would have a, a humidity in there. Uh, but yes, you'd want to um, re rehouse it in a Tuscan or plastic film canister, and ideally on a different core. Um, but if someone doesn't have this kind of thing, yes. so they just open up the can yes or like we just leave it slightly open i would think so yeah and part of that is as william um discussed already if it off gases and in that film tin it's com it, it's a very tight seal the gas inside speeds up the uh deterioration um so yes you would want to vent that out a little bit more so what the center is proceeding to do is we're trying to scan as much film as we can um, before it deteriorates using the scanner uh, in-house. Before, uh, when we didn't have scanners to that quality, we'd have to send the footage out uh, to get a, a good scan. Um, if you could look on our archive.org page, a lot of that was done by California Revealed, which I believe is part of the State Library, and they do tremendous work uh, across many different mediums. We've actually had them scan uh, phonographic records as well. Um, sorry, yeah, so they've done a tremendous job with that. We're trying to scan that in-house. Uh, the next challenge, of course, is that by uh, doing such high-quality scans, uh, you're creating a very large digital file. Um, so then we have to uh, store all that. Uh, IT has been tremendous help uh, getting us storage. Uh, but that's sort of the next hurdle once we actually have the time and the staffing to scan as much footage as we can.
So with that, I think that concludes everything I'd want to talk about. Um, William's still here as well, so if you had any questions for us, we're happy to answer them. Uh, likewise, as William mentioned, you can email us at csh at cityofsacramento.org. Uh, we're happy to answer your inquiries.